the short block is assembled. Mm. Yeah, you're not moving those. You know that old saying, chrome doesn't get you home? Well, Bill, it'll get you away from home really fast. What's up everybody? Today on Cars and Cameras, we're building the biggest, most powerful Tillotson small block engine we've ever done. 263 cc's, three inch bore, billet cylinder head, massive valves, 100 octane Sunoco fuel. It's gonna be a monster. And as you guys know, Mini Mayhem's coming up this weekend and it's my 30th birthday and I've been talking some smack about mini bikes racing on the drag strip, so we just wanted to make sure we were coming prepared. Yeah. You know, don't go at all if you're not gonna be prepared. That's right, so we've been keeping this entire build a secret for months now. Ike doesn't even know we're building this engine. We have to thank our buddy Wyatt for putting the package together, gopowersports.com for the majority of the parts, and Mark and Johnny for some of the really trick parts that are gonna take this engine build to the next level. Sit down, relax, enjoy the engine build, and we'll see you this weekend. So like we mentioned, this is the highest end build we've ever done. And this is the this is very far from a just bolt it together type build. Yeah, this this is top secret. So shh. All right. So to start things off, we need to do some block prep and going through the parts. We we have a uh, we have a head gasket that's going to be blocking off the oil delivery. And so we need to open up the drain hole to allow a lot more oil to go down so that way the oil stays in the rotating assembly instead of up in the cylinder head because with this with this oil delivery system at 9000 rpm all the oil is going to be at the top you don't want that so blocked off open that up good to go that's it i was gonna let it smash my thumb instead of the block <laughs> So the next thing we need to do on block prep is to chamfer the top of the sleeve and that's to help with the piston ring installation and potentially premature like detonation. So we don't want to don't want to blow this one up and I've safety tipped it and when you want to not hit the cylinder walls and go at like a 45 and just kind of And we're back. Welcome to the Cars and Cameras cooking show. Today we're gonna to be cooking up 263 cc's of sauce. And it's garnished with fresh greenery from the garden with a biscotti on the side. Now that I've prepared everything, we're gonna turn things over to sous chef John. So we're gonna be installing the bearing into the block with no hammers required. So you're gonna to wanna to start by preheating your oven to 400 degrees. You're gonna to wanna to plop your bearing in the freezer for about, I don't know, overnight would be ideal. Uh, make sure you lather up your block in some butter, stick it in the oven for about 10 minutes on a non-stick pan, bring it out, and then you're gonna be able to plop your bearing in, no problem, holy matrimony, Tilton 263 with biscotti. Now that you've heard the ding, the block should be ready. We're looking for a warm center. Oh my goodness. Oh. Careful now. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And you can see the, t the difference in the temperature. Now that bearing will not move. Dropped right in. Now it's time for a biscotti. I broke character, sorry. 
So for years we've talked about how the Tillotson 212, it's a reinforced block and the block itself is made of a higher quality casting uh, than uh, kind of the other options on the market. This was an engine, it was a 263 built by our buddy Wyatt who's been helping us this whole time on uh, our Tillotson 263 build. And as you can see, it was actually reinforced here. Uh, it had about 10 hours on the engine. This is an electric start block too, because he wanted a 263 that was electric start. 10 hours in, uh, it's, the engine started making a little bit more noise than usual. He pulled over and saw that these huge cracks had started to form. And it's a good thing he was able to pull over and shut the engine off because there's barely any material holding this block together. He was able to salvage all the parts and put it in a Tillotson block, non-electric start. But uh, this is just a prime example of why you use a Tillotson on your valuable high dollar high end engine builds. I mean, that is, that is gnarly right there. If you look very carefully at the end of the threads where in the machining process, they have actually let, accidentally left a little burr right there. And I, I bet you, you know, once you get this engine going, that thing's gonna fly out of there and just be bouncing around. So there's just one example of what we're trying to take care of. Yep, attention to detail is key here. I was looking over this piston and I noticed that there was this sharp edge right here on the skirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this fresh razor blade and try and chamfer this, this edge down. And you're like, why are you rolling it backwards? Well, cause it's shaving it off. And if you go the opposite way, you have potential of putting flat spots in it. You don't want to do that. Oh yeah, nice. That shouldn't scratch the cylinder wall. So here's another example. We love all these products. We use them all the time. And we're not trying to say that they're shipping dirty products. This is your responsibility as a builder to go over all your parts before installation. But check out what just came out of the, uh, the billet side cover there. And that's only one drain hole. So yep. You need to check everything that's been machined. Yep, yeah, it's just part of the, uh, just part of the machining process that that stays behind on some of this stuff. And you know, if it's a much cheaper engine, you may not care. But this is an expensive engine that's going to make a lot of horsepower and live at a really high RPM. And one of the pieces just fell on the table, so we got to find it. <laughs> so here's a little tech tip for everybody at home. On your piston rings, you have the writing here, and that always faces, uh, it goes up towards the piston, so it faces out kind of like how it's oriented right now. Also, another fun fact is that the, uh, the piston ring end gap on your top ring is always tighter than on your second ring, and that's to uh, prevent any air that goes by the top ring, um, doesn't make it past the second ring, and cause bounce back and cause the top ring to unseat wow that's some debris oh yeah oh we're gonna have to clean it out again well that's okay oh yeah so we got even more debris out of the cylinder we cleaned it out and we uh, blew it out with some air and now we're getting ready to install our side cover including our o-ring so we can uh, check our end play and shim it if necessary so yeah just Sometimes when you're, you gotta be real careful, these machine edges can be real sharp, but you wanna, instead of like pushing your thumb on here, you want to, uh, you can use like a socket, a smooth, smooth edge socket to kind of help you. Use your thumb to guide the gasket and then just use the socket to uh, kind of push it down in the groove. I'm gonna take a little razor blade and just apply just a little bit of pressure. There we go. Like that. So now we're gonna check our crankshaft in play and we've installed our shims on the flywheel side so that way we have our cam gear mesh proper or meshed perfectly. We gotta get that. Is that all the way in? No. Nah. Needs to go a little bit more. There you go. No! I tore it.
you didn't see that. Those are all metal shavings right there off the camshaft. So it might not seem like much, but you definitely don't want that floating around in your engine. So parts prep is pretty much done with. So now we're starting to assemble some things. We're gonna start with uh, doing the piston rings on the piston. To be exact, we're gonna start with the oiler ring. There we go. Now everybody's got their own way of doing this, but just like that. And you gotta be careful because you can break these rings. Now we're gonna install our rod bearings. You wanna locate the bearing tang, which is kind of like its little tooth or alignment guide. And you wanna locate the same, the same thing on the rod. And you're gonna wanna get it flush, nice and tight in that corner. You don't want it any amount of gap right there. And you wanna push the two the two ends together and down. Oh gosh, see, look, look at that. Wanted to try and walk over. So you push them down and in, and you want them flush. And you see how it scraped some material when I installed it? You wanna make sure to remove that because it will cause a high spot when you clamp the, two, the rod and the rod cap together. There it is. So you're gonna get the pick and remove the leftover material. So now we're gonna join the connecting rod with the piston with the wrist pin. We're gonna lube it up with some regular 30 weight oil. Wanna make sure we get it pretty much every mating surface that it's gonna have. Cover that. All right. And the piston arrow is pointing down. And this is the way the rod points down. And we'll double check that before we put the snap ring in. Oh yeah. There we go. Look at that. Ah, I'm having trouble. There we go, make sure, you really want to make sure that this is seated in there. And a good way to do it is if it's in the groove, you should be able to free spin it in the seat. And we're going to do that to the other side, make sure that one's good. Oh yeah. You don't want to rub the oil in because all you'll do is spin, you'll, you'll end up spinning your rings around. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm making sure I'm packing the oil in and all around the rings making sure it's not going to have a dry spot you want to make sure you get you have the the road the like the high side of the crankshaft all the way down because when you you could potentially smack the crank journal with the piston rod or the connecting rod when you go to when you install it so now that it's in the compressor the ring compressor you're going to want to push it down to where the skirts start to poke out because that's going to let you line the piston piston up in the bore and you're going to want to make sure that arrow still is pointing at you that all right now that it's on there flush arrows point in the right direction should be able to just all right now I might have to go a little further but we we want it in this position to install the cap and the rod bolts we're gonna start things off at 60 inch pounds, not foot pounds, because remember, one foot pound equals 12 inch pounds. You don't wanna do what, 176 foot pounds on those? You're gonna have a bad time. So, start at 60 and work our way up in 15 inch pound increments. So now for the final torque, 160 inch pounds. Oh 
gosh. Good click. All right. Should be good to go. All I got to do is sign my name in there. Put the cam in. I guess the lifters and seal it up. Things that you want to lube up now and at this point in the process would be the timing gear for the cam on the crankshaft. You're going to want to get all 300 get 360 degrees around there and maybe even a little bit on this face right there you're gonna want to get both sides of the rod so it doesn't rub on the crankshaft and then as well as the bearing all the way in the back lube up the cam lobes real nice and you're gonna want to get this gear as well all the way around there it goes I think <laughs> let's see oh that's a good click it's real all right all right good to go we've got one of the vent holes uh, vented back towards the cylinder head we're gonna plug the other one and uh, what is it? our parts guy he sent us the 90 because it's specifically meant so you can put the gas tank back on top except especially in my bike application because I need that fuel tank just gonna get that snug yep I'm not go anywhere Wipe off the excess a little bit. And now, I'm gonna install that PCV. All right, good morning, everybody. So last night, we got the short block assembled. It's looking fantastic. So today, we're moving on to basically the secret sauce of the build. This is a black market uh, MoFlo 1 all billet cylinder head. Uh, we have to thank Mark at uh, Black Market Innovations for getting this to us and Johnny at Leaned Back Racing for uh, doing some secret work to this head. We have some uh, top secret valve springs in here. Charles, you want to give them a rough idea of how uh, stiff they are? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> yeah, you're not moving those. Good gracious, without breaking your thumb. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> fracture cool. your thumb uh, uh, valve spring there's a lot of really cool technology that goes into the cylinder head so check it out start with this uh, nice fire ring we have that Johnny put in here for us and uh, so this firing in conjunction with our copper head gasket is gonna keep a good seal on our 13 to 1 compression ratio the valves are just insane so we have a 36 millimeter intake valve and a 27 millimeter exhaust valve for reference that exhaust valve on this uh, on the cylinder head is the same size as an intake valve on a stock predator 212 so just let that sink in uh, some of the other things going on is that the valve placement has actually been moved around to optimize to put the intake valve uh, centered basically for uh, best flow and the uh, spark plug has been repositioned to account for that so we're going to flip this thing over and you can actually see that the where the rockers mount are actually a little bit cocked in there and that's just to optimize the placement of that intake valve so you also have optimized port angles for again better flow we can't tell you exactly what this uh, cylinder head flows but it's about three times what a stock cylinder head will flow so Go Power Sports actually just put these on their website. So I'll link uh, to these in the video description. But this is an exceptional looking unit and there's just so much thought put into the design. Can't wait to see how it's gonna perform. So in order for the O-ring on the cylinder head to adhere to this copper head gasket, we need to anneal it with some heat and basically just season it, get it ready. So when we clamp it down, it's soft enough that we get a good, tight bite. Right. 
see how it, it doesn't really doesn't really look like copper anymore. That's what we want. The final step besides torquing the head down of sealing up this combustion chamber is we're gonna use some ultra gray, ultra, ultra gray, max torque and high temperature RTV. And we're gonna just lightly put it on the surface of the head gasket and just kind of dab it around. Make sure we've got a good sealant there and doubled up there because we are blocking off this part of the oiling system of the engine. And get it centered up because it has a little bit of play. And just push it. There we go. All right, now for the, uh, the cylinder head. Oh my goodness. This is the first time I've seen them together. This is awesome. All right, so now let's get the, uh, I guess the, the nuts for the head studs. Yeah, because we did the head stud kit for this one because, uh, golly, if it, if it comes apart, this cylinder head's going to orbit the moon. And we're going to get a call from NASA, and they're going to say, you sent what to space for how much? 20 foot-pounds is 240 inch-pounds, so... All right, there's one click. There's two. Three. All right. So we're mocking up the ratio rockers right now, and we're gonna have to do some clearancing because the valves are offset, you know, horsepower. So we need to clearance the shoulder right here and right here on either one because they're gonna end up hitting the, the, what is it, the valve spring cap or the actual valve spring. And you don't want that to self clearance in the engine because you know, metal, bad stuff, boom. Okay, so I've got the rocker arms installed, started painting on the side cover, looks great, some good plum crazy purple. Now we need to move on to the push rods. So this is a stock push rod this is a 3 16 performance push rod that'll work for 99.9% .9 of all performance applications. And then you have the quarter inch pencil that we're gonna be using today, built out of Cromali. There are very, very few mini bikes running a uh, Cromali quarter inch push rod, but uh, you know, 9,000 RPM and as much, as much spring pressure as we're gonna have, wouldn't hurt to have those. That's the. It's almost the same size push rod as in a small block Chevy. I mean, you weld two of these together and use it. So now let's move on to uh, torquing the rocker arms. We're gonna do ten foot pounds. Oh boy. All right, let's go back. Alrighty, so we're going to torque this to spec. Let's see. Click. <laughs> Found the valve spring. <laughs> Jeez Louise. We've got the flywheel torqued on, got the cup, and we started rotating it and we realized that uh, we've got some cam clearance issues possibly with the crankshaft. So we're leaving it right where it's like not really bound up, but doesn't want to move with without excessive force. So we're going to leave it right there. We're going to open the side cover up and just inspect it. Gentle, but firm. All right. So we made a tool, an inspection tool for an engine. Basically we cut a factory side cover open so where you can see the rotating assembly while it's bolted up because it's it's crucial to have the cam and the crankshaft supported so when you roll the engine over you can actually get a, a perfect example of what's going on behind the side cover um, and we've inspected it gone through everything and we couldn't find what we were hearing I think what we were doing is we were rolling it backwards and something the the compression release was just hitting and making a noise so We've rolled it around all, 
all three of us have checked it out and we can't seem to find anything. So we're gonna button it back up. Now I'm gonna install the this uh, intake port. And let me tell you, this is nice. It's light as a feather too. Oh yeah. It's kind of funny because um, so we're gonna have to when we when we install this, they don't actually make a gasket this big. Or if we use the factory gasket, it would be like tissue paper thin all the way around. So we're gonna do the the RTV, uh, dab it around all the way around, and then secure this thing on. You know that old saying, "Chrome doesn't get you home." Well, <laughs> Bill, it'll get you away from home really fast. Plum crazy purple. I didn't read the instructions on the can, but it looks good. Also Great. carburetor. Oh yeah, we got that. We got the uh, the the magic the magic happening. So I'm gonna leave, uh, I guess, somewhere right in there because we'll probably go and put a fuel cut off right here, just for safety. But yeah, man, what do you what do you think about this pur the purple? I think it's that... subtle on the metal. Oh, but... it's good. Yeah, this uh, our buddy Eugene uh, backyard repair hooked us hooks us up with all the best colors. I know, and we just so happen so, to have enough purple left over. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks, man. It's time for the exhaust, all jokes aside. Because I think we're ready to start this up. I'm getting excited. Me too. Oh, another seal. All right, so we're going to put in some Sunoco... 100 octane. Yep, Sunoco Racing Fuels is a sponsor of the channel. And they hooked us up with a pail of 260 GT, which is their 100 octane fuel, which we're gonna need 100 octane for this 13 to one compression engine. I think that's enough. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, this is a first for cars and cameras. Bump box. All right, you ready, John? Yep. All right. it always I have trouble putting these centered it's hard it's close enough all right so fast forward a couple of months and we're now three days before mini mayhem and Charles's 30th birthday party at Busco Beach this weekend Ike has no idea that we built this 263 engine and we installed it on uh, the super hog which we're gonna do a video on installing the engine on the bike and ripping it in a separate video But we're gonna unveil it to Ike this morning and see if he wants to take it out for a spin and some other items Good morning, sir. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing good. I was just shooting uh, Some uh, CR 500 stuff real didn't, quick. Didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, you're fine You're fine How's it hanging? Boy. <laughs> Happy birthday, Charles. Guess what came in the mail today? <laughs> Is he in the box? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you find out? <laughs> no birthday gift. What is it, a moron? 
<laughs> you know, maybe. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it sounds like he's choking on something. <laughs> Maybe he's not alone in there. He better be alone in there. <laughs> Housekeeping! Go away! More sleepy! Y'all were having fun with this, weren't you? Of course! Yeah, this one's only got one screw. <laughs> I don't think there's only one screw. I think there's another loose one inside. Happy birthday to me. I'm going to close this. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Oh, man, there's a lot of screws out there. You can just... I don't know. I don't know. What is wrong? <laughs> What is wrong with him, dude? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. Is that a... Yeah, it's a different dog. Different bike? Yeah. And there's a dog toy up here, so that's the noise. Behold the super hog. Remember when you called me and you were like, I got to be at work because you guys don't seem to get very much done when I'm away? Uh-huh. That's because we've been building an entirely different bike. Without me? Yes. I am proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that's not what I expected him to say, but the, thank you. I'm totally I shocked. I'm honestly, I can't wait how, for you to ride it. How did y'all keep this a secret from me? It, a lot of trips under the house. Seriously. Yep. Hey, we're hiding spot. Dang it. Oh well, that's okay. It's a good. It, it's a good hiding spot. Well, super. I, I see a very uh, nice head on that. Oh yeah. I see uh, studs in the block rather than head bolts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Or, you know, a few other things. Black slide. Hey, this is just stuff external. Happy birthday. What? External. He got me this for my birthday? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Happy birthday, man. Chuck. My dog's had several of those, and he, you know, <laughs> it just so happens to be purple, and that was the theme. It sounds different with the box open. It sounded really weird. I'm in, sure. I'm sure. Yeah, you have, like, <laughs> what is the mystery box? It kind of sounds. <laughs> yeah. While you were choking on something. Interesting colors. The best part is. Yeah. The forward most thing on that entire drag strip is going to be a purple dog toy. <laughs> what kind of cam? Uh, honestly, we don't even know. Yeah, it's top secret. We it was don't a even blank know. box. Yeah. From Mr. Barry. That's right. Man. How did y'all keep this a secret for so long from me? Like, how long has this been going on? Uh, three months. So let's, Maybe let's longer. Your, you know, normal valves are like this. Ours are like that. So you, you almost can't fit a piece of paper in between yeah. them. Nice. Right. So we're releasing the full Super Hog build and send in next week's episode. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the most powerful tilt to the small block we've ever built. Enjoy Ike ripping around here for a few minutes. And we will see you this weekend at the drag strip at Mini Mayhem. He likes it. This thing is insane. And just to show you how insane, you have to park it on top dead center. Because otherwise you'll stress the valve springs. You want them evenly sitting. We'll build you one.
Yeah, because you do not want the wrist pin coming out while the engine's running, because that's just that's a rapid that's an unscheduled rapid disassembly for sure. All right. 